So we carry on with our explanation for uh, chapter two, uh, rolling stock systems. And we have been talking about um, uh, the different subsystems that consist of the rolling stock. And we stopped at railway uh, rolling stock selection issues. So let's have a look at these in more details. And So, and we reached rolling stock selection issues. So there are a group of issues that need to be discussed when uh, selecting any rolling stock. Some of them are coming from an engineering uh, background, some of them operational, some of them commercial and political. So for the engineering issues, examples of the engineering issues that uh, you should be looking at the type of vehicles based on the load they are going to bring to the uh, to infrastructure as well as the speed and the potential track damage. This is some of the engineering issues. Also, you will be looking at energy consumption, uh, whether uh, they have the right, uh, for example, a, a, a train with a tilting uh, movement is different than a train without tilt. So this is an example of an engineering issues that you would be thinking about before selecting your rolling stock. About operational issues, you would be thinking, shall I select a multiple unit or a locomotive? Uh, what kind of lever do I, level of service do I want to provide on board? Shall I provide a catering service, a luggage, connection between vehicles? Uh, and also you should be thinking about the depot, where I should be locating my depot and how I will be locating my uh, staff. So this will be some of the operational issues that you would be thinking about. Also, you would be thinking about commercial and political issues. And by commercial and political issues, you, you might be thinking about funding, what kind of, and you would be thinking, okay, maybe some types of locomotives would have funding or, uh, uh, Cost, uh, costing issues that are not associated with the others in terms of lo uh, life cycle costs, as well as uh, being able to fund the project. Uh, sometimes electrification becomes a political topic where some people are supportive of electrif electrification, while others are more supportive of uh, uh, using diesel or using, uh, especially in rural areas, Environmental or energy issues always will be part of a political decision that you'd be choose your rolling stock based on. And sometimes you would be choosing your, um, your uh, you, the, the whole railway uh, concept based on an environmental social benefits rather than based on pure profit. Another thing you would be thinking about while you select your uh, rolling stock is about the train service that I would like to provide. Am I going to provide an intercity service? Am I going to provide a suburban commuter service uh, around the city? Or am I going to provide a metro service at the heart of the city? Is it a tram light rail uh, serving, uh, uh, serving a, a decent size of people, not so large? Or is it a metro with heavy uh, load and heavy uh, passengers? So uh, I, well, I mean by heavy number of passengers, like 80,000 to 100,000. So the intercity train would have an interior that is comfortable, that is suitable for a, a, a journey between one hour and two hours and maybe more. And it also can have entertainment systems and power supplies. It also can be designed for tilting. The suburban commuter service might have more frequent service, five minute headway or uh, and lower speed, but also you'd be providing more standing space as the journey time is not that long. And the capacity can reach up to 100,000 passenger per hour per direction. The metros are limited in length, length, three to 30 kilometers, but also they have lots of doors and plenty of standing spaces. So uh, the, the room for standing in metros is much larger than the room in, 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 uh, for standing in an intercity train. Tram and right rail, rail systems are for a small number of people, up to 25,000 passengers. And there are people movers, which are very common in uh, airports and maglev as well. So, count. 
The Kant concept is like a super elevation in, in road design. The Kant is the angle between uh, the ground and the body of the vehicle. So the, the, this angle here, the, they are parallel. The angle is zero between the body of the vehicle and between the ground. Here, there is a, here, they, they are almost uh, parallel to each other, the, these two lines. So there is a balance. There is no Kant and here there is no super elevator. Here the angle is lower than the, the ground. So we say this is a Kant efficiency. Here the angle of the ground is higher than the angle of the vehicle. So we say that's a Kant excess. And passengers like to feel some lateral acceleration inside, uh, uh, inside uh, while they are passing curves. This is why we allow for Kant deficiency. But there is a maximum limit or on how much you can and you can allow, and this can be related to some of the track damage. So Kant is one of the way for uh, for making passengers feel some of the centrifugal force, a small jerk on the centrifugal force, rather than going uh, without any feeling of the centrifugal force. So, so they feel the tilt, or they feel that the train is going uh, around a curve. Bogies is that frame that uh, holds the two axles together. So there are there is a bo so there are some bogies, some vehicles with no bogies, some vehicles with a single axle bogies, and some vehicles with multiple axles. They are all performing the same functions, making sure that you have a better ride quality through suspension systems, braking, and uh, other uh, uh, and other components. So they carry braking and traction equipment as sometimes as a suspension and most of the times carry suspension components. Also, they contain the axle bearings and by the axle bearings is the, uh, is the small, uh, it's, a, it's, a circular, uh, it's a circular bearing that comes at the end of the axle. So this is called an axle bearing and it's, it's one of the sources of defects in, uh, uh, in some railways. So that's it for this uh, section. We'll be discussing more about different uh, railway subsystems and components, rolling stock, railway rolling stock subsystems and components in the next chapter. Have a great evening and we'll see you in the next lesson.